edition of Brookside Reunion, uh, where for the first time in 30 years, sharing <laughs> the screen together is John McArdle and Justine Kerrigan. I feel like we should be having a round of applause or something there. <laughs> My best, How are you guys? My best on-screen daughter, she was, ever. <laughs> yes. Best on-screen dad. <laughs> oh. And how are you guys? All right, yeah, fine, thanks. Because I know we were just yeah. discussing lockdown because you're in, uh, you know, lockdown at the moment, so it's not fun for you guys, is it? No, not in Liverpool, it's not. But um, we'll get through it, hopefully. It's just the economy that I'm worried about. Yeah, of course. All the lovely bar owners, all the effort and the work they've put in to make Liverpool, you know, as fabulous as it's it's been the last few years and it's all looking like it's crumbling. But it, it's a really it's funny time. Yeah. Isn't it? It is, yeah, it is. And it's like, you know, it's like like what Justine said, you know, the people who have businesses, small business and that, and they're mm. struggling like that. And, and also for actors, this is one thing, for actors, yeah. they get nothing. You know what I mean? They get, they, cool. they have to, to get universal credit there's no work coming in whatsoever yeah so oh, and and you've got bozo there telling us to retrain yeah. and do oh help. yeah do like buddy you know and it's time for young actors why should they have to retrain no yeah they spent three years or whatever i've worked professionally it's you know it's 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 sad really it is very sad and i can't believe they were sending those things around saying retrain you could be in you know retrain for cyber retrain and I was, no uh so no, it's you wonder what's going through the heads when them words come out the mouth, don't you? And the, there's no shame either. I was just saying to Ian about the Liverpool situation. We obviously have been singled out, but mm. there's no Again. subtlety about it, is there? It's just like they don't even care that we know it's it's like that, you know, we've, we've been singled out. No. 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 <laughs> well, the Tories are never like Liverpool anyway, from Thatcher no. Day. Onwards, you know what I mean? They, well, I remember always, Thatcher, she picked on Liverpool quite a lot in the 80s, didn't she? She certainly did, and they haven't stopped since then, so it doesn't surprise me one bit, you know, that they they, they don't seem to care about Liverpool at all. Down in, yeah. No. Well, then we have a new year coming, and I've got to say, I'm sure I speak for everybody, we're glad to see the back of 2020, the weirdest year of our lives, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. let's get the theatres open. Yeah, yeah, get back to normal. I want to get back into theatre, you see. I mean, not just actually going to see theatre. I wanted to um, join this local theatre, but it's not open till next year now, so... Yeah. yeah. Can't wait for that, so... Right, shall we proceed then with the first question? Because John, Excuse obviously... Me, yeah, sorry, I've just to... got a beer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just seems gone well prepared. <laughs> Have you got a beer, John? I'll, I'll get me wine in a minute. It's you get your wine. I'm Friday night. Time. <laughs> I'll wait no, for Justine. Vodka, really. No, it's water. Do a monologue and go and get it downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> a monologue about Boris. Oh, Doris. Yeah. I wanted to tell him to, you know, two words I wanted to say to him on Twitter, but I thought, no, I'll end up getting my account suspended. So I thought he's not worth it, yeah. is he? So, yeah. He doesn't read it anyway. So, yeah. Nah, true, true. Right, well, I'm just going to tell viewers, because obviously we had spoken before, hadn't we, guys? But last time, somebody didn't press record for Zoom, me. So yeah. here we are again. Um, this time, with Justine, we're going to be speaking about Brookside, of course. And with John, a little bit about Brookside at first, but mainly about his uh, post-Brookside career and his many roles since. So lots of questions for you guys. Are you ready for question one? Yeah. Yeah. OK, Justine, I'll start with you. OK. Right. Before joining as a regular cast member in 1985, you actually played a different character, Pat. So can yeah. you just tell us a bit about that? And this was in 1984. And what had led up to that role? Because I know that your granddad, Peter, was in Brookside as well. Well, he was an actor. He was in Boys from the Black yeah. Stuff and lots of other things as well, wasn't he? Well, I was basically in sewing class. Uh, making this horrible doll. I hate sewing. And um, <laughs> one of the secretaries come in and she said, you've got to go. Um, your granddad's waiting for you. So I panicked and I thought there'd been like an emergency. And my granddad was waiting outside the school in a taxi. 
and he said uh, you've got an audition for, for for brookside and i was like what i'd never expressed any interest in being an actress ever and um next thing he took me to this little place it was like off dale street in liverpool and there was all these girls there honest to god i had absolutely no idea what was happening and um there was a lady called janet goddard i don't know if john ever met janet yeah um, yeah she was really nice wasn't she um and there was just all these girls and they just said just sit down and um read this bit of script and then you've got to do an improvisation well I was like I don't even know what that is um so basically I had to ask and they said it's just sitting around and they give us a scenario and they phoned me up like the next day and just said you've got the part wow I still didn't really know what was happening <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, of, I bet you were buzzing then weren't you <laughs> well yeah but it I think because I hadn't gone looking for it it was all a bit weird. So I wasn't like excited or it was just like, what is this? You were kind of um, nonchalant about it, sort of, oh, well, I'll take it in your stride kind of thing. Yeah, I didn't really, I, I, can't, I know it sounds weird saying I don't really, I didn't really know it was happening, but I didn't because there was no build up. It was just like, there you are, there's a job. So, and I know with actors, obviously John trained for a long time and it's like, you know, it's an ambition. Um, and I kind of got the bug a bit then. Mm. Um, and obviously they, they asked me back to, to um, try for the part of Tracy. But that's all that happened. There was no like, there was no planning. It, I haven't been to theatre school. I haven't done anything. So. That was great though, wasn't it? It Very was, good. yeah. <laughs> and then of course, well, Pat, she, um, well, she got Damon in a lot of trouble and then she dumped him, didn't she? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't Pat involved in the Kling film? I mean, I, people of a certain generation film. will remember the Kling film episode with Damon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was the Kling film episode, yeah, and the, the Quiche Lorraine. Um, you were in quite a few of those episodes, though, in 1984. Because funnily enough, just to let people know, I mean, a lot of fans will know this already, but strangely enough, John, you were in the uh, same episode as Justine. Again, yeah. played a different character, Mr Todd. Yeah, I mean, I, I told Damon off for the Kling film incident. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. you caned him as well, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. I did. Yeah. Done it again. You've done it again, uh, <laughs> young Damon Grant. <laughs> you know, we had it in for him. So, yeah, and I didn't realize until later, Justine was in the same sort of uh, episodes as me. So weird, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that we were. Yeah, in. it is weird. Did yeah. you two not meet during that time? No, I don't think we did, do we? No. No, it was filmed different times, I think, yeah. wasn't it? Um, yeah. Mine were... Because they used to... Yeah. They used to film school things over the weekend, didn't they? That's right, yeah. They did, yeah. Because the school was shot. It was a real school, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Built a shot, yeah. But no, that was really funny, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, we also That's remember, John, you told us a little bit about your hangover story. You were hungover once with a scene with uh, Sue Johnston and Simon O'Brien and Ricky Tomlinson, weren't you? <laughs> but, yeah, well, that's why it's bad to do it at the weekend, isn't it, you see? Because yeah. I was doing a panto in Chester and we'd just finished the, the panto. So we had a big party afterwards and I got absolutely legless. And I can't take my ale at all. I'm really bad. <laughs> So I was so hungover. I mean, I was physically sick all the time. Oh. And then it was Chris Clough directing. And he said, OK. And I was sweating like mad like the, with the lights and everything. Yeah. And I had like five pages of dialogue to do. And I was going, and Sue Johnson was uh, there and Ricky. And I was like, uh, I was going, when they said cut, I said, can I just go to the toilet, please? I just want to go to the toilet. And they went, oh, all right. <laughs> I was heaving. When I went to the toilet, I was like throwing up coming back white as a sheet and uh, they were going are you all right John and I went yeah I'll be all right just get let's hurry up and get this done <laughs> <laughs> well, they all had a sense of humor about it then they were all laughing with you about oh, they, it they found out later Sue was killing herself and Ricky <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, there was lots of hangovers yeah lots of hangovers on set yeah <laughs> oh really yes yeah oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay this one's for you John now, just prior to joining Brookside, you actually turned down a role in Coronation Street for Brookie. Did, am I right? Yeah, luckily I was in a lucky position then because uh, I, I went into Corrie to do to play this uh, copper mm. who investigates something at the Rovers' return, and uh, I only I was only in for three episodes, 
And they said, would you be interested in doing more? And I said, yeah, I, I would be. But meanwhile, uh, Brookside, I had an interview with Brookside to play Billy. Mm. The, and then they kept, they were, they were asking me at Coronation Street, do you want to do it or not? I said, I'm just going to wait. Can you wait a week? You know, I just wanted to hear back from Brookside because I knew which one I wanted to, to join. I'd rather have joined Brookside, you see. Mm. So, but I didn't want to hedge. I was hedging my bets, you know. I didn't want to, you know, say no to Corey and then be let down by Brookside. So mm. I waited for Brookie to say yes, and then I could say no. I'm, I've got this other job. So that, that you know, that was, and that was the choice I would would have made anyway. Yeah, because it was oh. a new soap set in Liverpool in my hometown. So it was no, it's a no brainer, really, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's on your doorstep, isn't it? And it was was it DCI Meadows that you were asked to play? That yeah. you played? Yeah. It was. Because every time I hear that name, I always think straight away of the character from the Bill. <laughs> oh yeah, course, yeah. Because yeah. there's a Meadows in the Bill, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Yeah. DCI Meadows. Yeah, you yeah. very good. At it, yeah, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Who played the part in the end, John? Uh, they, they got cut. They didn't. Uh, they didn't carry on. Oh uh, right. Oh no. Yeah. Was no, Julie it... Goodyear in the? Were you working with Julie Goodyear at all? Yeah, God? it was Julie Goodyear. I was supposed to be having a thing with Julie. Yeah. Oh really? What was yeah. Julie like to work with? I've got to ask. Hilarious. Oh, yeah. right. Because yeah. I know Sue Jenkins got on really well with her as well. Yeah. And you hear these stories about Julie Goodyear being really yeah. difficult and scary. No, she's just very funny. She just made me laugh all the time. I she said, oh, you're the corpse, aren't you? And I went, I am, I'm afraid. And she went, oh, well, I'll have to watch it. <laughs> and, uh, and she had to say these lines and, and I, I couldn't keep my face straight when she said them. She said, oh, yeah. <laughs> I went, I'm laughing at the lines, love. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's funny, but she was funny. Uh, Julie Goodger is better, wasn't she? <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, well, we'll move on to Justy. Back to Brookside here. Um, I wanted to know, how did you find the transition of going into a major TV series and then suddenly finding yourself recognised in the streets? I know we discussed this last time, obviously. But... Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> No, well, I no, Jason, like hope you, who played your brother Rod, got yeah. the attention and stuff, did he? Um, it, yeah, I think if if it's what you want to do and it's what you've always kind of strived to do, it's you, you you know I think it's easier to accept. And maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, or maybe it's just a personality <laughs> thing. Um, but I yeah, I really struggled with it. Um, you, you know, you get used to it and you find where you can go. There was a couple of nightclubs I could go where I felt comfortable. Um, but there wasn't many people, as many celeb type people around Liverpool at the time. Mm. Um, it was basically footballers and beauty queens. Mm. And then Rookie came along and, um, you know, we used to go to town a lot, shopping and drinking. And um, I just used to get really uncomfortable with it. Mm. Um, it's probably wrong, but... You know, oh, really? I mean, did you ever have, have any strange fan encounters, something that really made you nervous or anything like that? Or were no, people we generally to get, nice to you? Well, we used to get a bit of stick, you see. Um, really? And I think people were used to dealing with people who were on the telly and it was like, you know, if there was people our age, you'd just get a load of aggravation, really. And I know poor Jason did as well. That's jealousy. Um, because we were younger, we were out and about all the time. You know what I mean? It, you know, we, you, you're 16, 17, you're out, are you? You're never in. So mm -hmm. um, I found myself starting to stay in a bit more um, and not wanting to go out as much. Mm. But I kind of grew out of that when I got a bit older. And I used to give it all up back as well, you see. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and I bet, how did they react to that? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I don't know. It just, yeah, I probably should have just walked away, but it's, you know, it was just instinctive to, you know. Well, of I course. I learned, yeah, I learned to keep it short. Well, I mean, do you still get, I can imagine you still get recognised now. I mean, how do you find that now? Or I don't mind now that I'm older. Yeah. Um, and obviously um, people are more polite now and... Mm. It, you know, it, it's just a different experience. Um, I think I, I wish I'd have had the understanding of it then and the maturity to have dealt with it. But that was the one thing I think um, my dad used to tell me off and he'd say, you don't handle that very well. If you were having a meal and people would come over, which I still think is bad if you're sitting there having a meal and 
so oh, really rude, like, yeah. Something in your face, yeah. But I don't know, John, if you can remember, I've got a face that I can't hide. No. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a car on, I had a car on, yeah. yeah. It was like, yeah. um, she- you were, you, yeah, you didn't please anyone if they wanted, you yeah. know what I mean? You, <laughs> you know, you were your own person, which is quite good, really. You know, you were... Yeah, but you were... dad used to tell me off for that. <laughs> oh, dear, yeah. Of course, I mean, I know a lot of some other cast members, they've sort of left the industry now, and you don't kind of hear them from them that much. I know Karen, um, she, okay. is it Sheila O'Hara? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she yeah. was great. Because she was brilliant, wasn't she? But I, yeah. nobody knows where she is now, do they? She went and got a proper job in the end and did something something useful. Well, I've heard, I don't know if it's true or not, I read that she actually opened up her own antiques shop somewhere, a business or something. I've heard that, yeah. Oh, you've heard that as well, have you? Because you read all these things and it could be hearsay, but... Yeah. No, she was great. Really good in it, she was. Yeah, yeah. great actress. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She's a really good character, though. Yeah. Oh, she was her attitude as well. I th- always thought Tracy sort of kind of took over from the attitude because when Karen sort of, yeah. when you arrived, Karen sort of was growing up and going to university by then. So I thought Tracy came in with the, and sort of replaced her with the attitude because Tracy yeah. had attitude, didn't she? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, you should know, John, yes. <laughs> yeah. A bit nosy, though. She was. Yeah. She was. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. For John... Now, it's actually been 30 years since you and Sue Johnson left Brookside. You know, you drove off into the sunset. Well, amazing Stoke. <laughs> um, and I gather, because I remember you told me that uh, in the blog that we did last year, um, was that one of the first things that you did after Brookside? You and Sue went into a play written by uh, Jim Cartwright for you. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, he wrote the play for us because uh, a mutual friend, Andy Hay, mm. uh, he used to go out with Sue, um, was running the Bolton Octagon. And then Jim Cartwright was a fan of the programme. And he said, uh, if they ever fancy doing a play, let me know and I'll write them one, you know, which was fantastic. Yeah. And so uh, Phil let us have uh, two months out to do it, which was in 1989. Oh. And uh, yeah, when we first did it. Yeah. And, uh, and then we both left and and we did it again when we left in 1990. Mm. So we took it, we did it at the Bolton for about four weeks, five weeks, and then we took it to the Edinburgh fr- uh, Fringe. And then we took it to London for three months and ended up there with it for three months. Yeah, brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. Well, you said about Octagon Theatre, I used to walk past a picture of you and Sue Johnson every day, because I lived in Bolton. Uh, <laughs> there was a picture of you and Sue on the uh, at Octagon Theatre, yeah. Oh yeah, great, yeah. There you go. I used to think of Brookside every time. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. I'll have to tell you this quick story, though. When I was doing two, and uh, we played like nine characters each in it, and there was, uh, there was, it's in the round, you know, the Bolton Octagon. And yes, the people, yes. The people are right near you. You know, you're, you're very close. You can be like two feet away from them. Mm. And there was a scene where I come in to play the owl fella, and he, he sits down in the bar on a stool, and he talks about his dead wife, and he, he endearingly you know and he does it very slowly and the mm. director and that said do it really slow john loads of pauses you know it's your dead wife anyway it was full of old ladies this this matinee oh. anyways and uh i was doing a pause and this one went forgot your lines <laughs> so she, sat, she sat like two feet away so i carry on like like that and she goes you look different from what you do on telly. Oh, God. <laughs> right? I'm going, she's going, do you like doing this? And I'm going, she's having a conversation with me while I'm on stage playing a character. Oh, <laughs> no. So I said, can I just finish, love? Anyway, the audience were just killing themselves laughing yeah. with this book. She stole the show. <laughs> and she was chatting to me. I said, can I just finish? <laughs> Play finished. And she went, oh, go on then. Go on oh. then. <laughs> That was nice of her. And it's all live. That's the thing. You can't go back and do it again, yeah. is it? That's no. the thing with theatre. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was good, though. Fabulous. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, uh, Justine. Uh, now, even though Tracy Corkill became a teen fashion icon for girls, 
I gather you actually hated most of the clothes that she wore. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you know what? I was really game and I'd, I'd dress up. To be honest, if I didn't want to do it, I wouldn't have done it. No. But um, it was a bit of a laugh and it gave the character some identity as well. Um, I mean, if I look back at the amount of different looks and styles and hairstyles that she had, it's ridiculous. More image changes than Madonna, I've got to say. <laughs> she yeah. never looked the same for more than about two or three months. It was no, always that's different. true. I'm going to have to count yeah. all the image changes over the years because she really did. Yeah. Blonde one minute, brunette the next. Yeah. I know the last 12 months that I was in it, I insisted on getting all my own clothes. <laughs> well, in the last year, that's where we saw a different sort of Tracy. She'd sort of yeah. blossomed a little bit then, hadn't she? And she'd become a businesswoman. Yeah, I used to go and do my own shopping. Yeah. yeah. And you were happy with that, were you? Yeah. <laughs> what year did you leave, Justine? What year did you leave? 93. Oh, right. So it was only like yeah. three years. Before. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd had a bit of a break because I'd had Holly as well. Oh, of course. Um, yeah. So. Jason, Jason Hope, he left the same sort of time, around the same time as you, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 90, yeah. 92, late 92, I think Jason left. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, just reminding me, actually, because um, I know Jason Hope did return around 1998 or 1999, just for an episode or something. You yourself also went back in 2002, didn't you? Late 2002. You were going to come back as yeah. a semi-regular? Yeah. Originally. Yeah. But then, obviously, Channel 4 decided to shove Brookside into the Saturday afternoon slot, and then, obviously... We, they're basically, it was on News at 10 that were basically saying that even though it was a 20th anniversary of Brookside, it was unlikely that it would celebrate its 30th. Yeah, they did. Um, yeah, just off the blue, I got a phone call, asked me if I'd like to go back. And it was one episode and they checked my availability um, for the next few months. Um, and I think there was a view to bring the character back. Uh -huh. And during that time, um, I got told that the show was finishing. So... It wouldn't be happening. Oh, what a lousy time in there, eh? Yeah. Because, yeah, I know. Well, the strangest thing about that was, uh, I know, because I've, I've been looking into it, like, uh, recently, Phil Redman had just done a revamp on the show when you were asked to come back. Uh, that was the around the period that the helicopter crash and the big yeah. siege. Um, and they'd spent all this money on this revamp to try and get, obviously, because viewing figures had, dwindled by then and they were hoping to pump them back up but rather than wait for those episodes to go to go to air they just announced that no it's going into a Saturday afternoon slot and then I remember a couple of months later suddenly it was announced that no that was it it was moving to a late night Tuesday night slot and uh, it was going to be finished so. yeah I, which is mad because we went from two episodes to three and the omnibus so yeah. it dominated quite a lot of channel four um I mean, it's Throughout the 80s shame, and 90s, right? Brookside was always like the face of Channel 4, I thought. It was the most... Yeah, and, and it's a shame that it ended up like that. And I've, you know, I'm not afraid to say. I, I, I didn't want it to finish, whether I was in it or not, because I had a lot of friends who were going to lose mm. work. And mm. um, that's, that was the worst aspect of it for me. But mm. it was as if the show was really unloved um, yeah. in the end. And I think by the cast and, and Phil or whoever's decision it was, um, some of the storylines were ridiculous. Um, <laughs> that was going to get crazy, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't watch it, but I'd flick in and out because Holly used to watch it because she yeah. was about 11. And, um, yeah, it was unrecognisable. And I know things have to change. Things can't just stay the same as they are. No. But you watch Corrie, and that's still got the essence of what Corrie was. Yes. Um. You've got your group of old people who, you know, we've got such a, a large older generation. They need someone to relate to as well. Mm -hmm. They don't, don't just want to be watching a show full of young blonde women who all look the same. Do you know what I mean? Like they've walked um, out of a catalogue magazine. Or yeah, and like even that. Emmerdale has some, has some essence of what it was. It's based in this little village. But Brookside was just unrecognisable. It was at the end. It was, yeah. I can't remember what it just, yeah. I mean, this, there was one story. I know Sue Jenkins said she hated it herself. And it was um, when they were questioning whether Sue, uh, Jackie Corkill was a, a lesbian or not. And I thought, yeah. 
No, no way. She always liked the men. She loved Jimmy, and no, yeah. I just no way was she a lesbian. It's a big play, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah. No, well, that's a shame. Though. But I mean, you know, it still would be nice for it to be rerun. You know, the classic years up until yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's yeah. hope that happens quite soon. Fingers crossed. See, I think they missed a trick during lockdown. People yeah. actually, it was actually twi- uh, trending on um, Twitter, Brookside. Yeah. People wanting it back, and oh, Channel right. Four just basically ignored it. I feel like Channel Four have just sort of kind of washed their hands of the program, and it's yeah. a shame really because that's the roots of what put the channel on the map in the first place. I know. Yeah. So, but... Well, we'll see. We'll see. I shall yeah. keep persevering with the petition anyway and keep annoying them and bugging <laughs> them until we get a result. Yeah. You carry <laughs> but, on. Yeah. yeah. But obviously, I know, see, there's one thing about everybody always says, oh, they should bring it back. They should bring it back. And oh, it doesn't matter that there's real residents living in the close because they can just build a replica. And I'm always saying to people, but no, it wouldn't make sense because in the last episode, yeah. I don't know if you remember, the houses were all due to be demolished. They'd all yeah. moved away, so it wouldn't yeah. make any sense for them to suddenly be back on Brookside Close anyway. They couldn't start making it again. It's just not no, a possibility. Could, no, no, it'd be a different programme altogether. It'd be a d- totally yeah. different. I would like to see maybe something similar, like um, set in Liverpool and another street maybe, and it, completely fresh, and maybe Brookside actors coming in playing different characters. Yeah. Something, something set in town, you know, in yeah. the Liverpool yeah. city centre, you know. That would be nice. Be nice. Yeah. Oh, I miss hearing the regu- the Scouse accent regularly on TV, you see. <laughs> Something around the Baltic. <laughs> yes, yes. That would be wonderful, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be good one of the hotels, you know, one of the yeah. Yeah, set in a hotel. Oh, yeah, that would be good, actually, yeah. Because then you get, you get loads of people coming in and out, don't you? Yeah. Some guest characters. Yeah. Or something. Maybe you should set something up. Maybe you should start writing one, John. <laughs> Nah, I've done it. I can't be arsed. You, you just want to roll in it, don't you? Yeah. I know. I say I'm going to write things and I have an idea, not to do anything, but just as a hobby. I and I get about four pages in and I go, oh, yeah, yeah. I can't be bothered. I've I get really it. easily distracted yeah. by wine and telly and snacks. Yeah. yeah, you've got to be in the focus and stuff. And I have to, if I've got things around me or if I've got the music on or telly, I just have to have complete silence if I'm writing anything. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, You've got hard. to have a lot of patience for it as well, I suppose. I've been getting stuff off the ground. I've tried a few things and it's really hard, I'll yeah. tell you. Yeah. Like, geez, and a lot of work and a lot of yeah. rejection and stuff. So, you know, it is difficult. It's great to come up with the idea and you're all yeah. enthusiastic and everything. You're pushing it forward and everything. And then all of a sudden you're talking to different people who want to change it and then there's no money coming for it. And there's, in the end, it, it takes like... My son worked on a film for seven years and it, and it never got made in the end. Oh, no spent time and all that trying to get this film off the ground, it just collapsed at the last minute. Lost thousands and thousands of pounds, you know, make, trying to get it made. That's Neil thinks he's done well, hasn't he, by getting things? Yeah, Neil. Neil thinks done well. I did one of Neil's films as well. I yeah, I believe so. I haven't seen that. I'll have to, I'll have, to have a look. Charlie Rhodes, rest in peace. Uh, yeah. Ian McCulloch was in it. He was brilliant. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, was he? <laughs> he played this mad uh, uh, Western enthusiast with a big bat handle mar moustache. <laughs> you couldn't right. understand the word he was saying, his accent. <laughs> it was like, what did you say, Ian? <laughs> he was brilliant. Brill. I forgot where we were up to now, actually. Uh, oh, Justine, I've done yours. So, John, this is yours. Ah. Now, before we move on and chat about your post-Brookside career, yeah, I just have to ask you your opinion on this, as Brookside was once described in a documentary. I know we've had this discussion before. Uh, right. As being the darling of the left and scourge of the right-wing media. Uh, would you say that was an apt description of Brookside? Yeah, I think it, I think it was what, one of the only programs that did uh, have left leanings. You know that you could see that uh, it did have a voice. You know, through, through Ricky Tomlinson's character, who was very pro-union and stuff, mm. and I, you know, he had a voice through for the left in it. You know what I mean? All the issues that came up during that period we were doing it was when Thatcher was in in power, okay. and uh, working people were suffering, and the non-working people were suffering even more so you know and it's uh, it reflected those issues in the program that's one great thing about Brookside when it was yeah. at its 
because when they spoke about what was going on in society, you know, within your world, and uh, they were very good at reflecting that, especially with the writers like Jimmy McGovern and, you know, Peter Cox and Alan Swift and all that, who were yeah. really good local writers. So, no, that's why it was such a good program. That's why people tuned in to watch it, because there was real people. There was humour in it, great humour in that programme that came from reality. It wasn't sitcom humour, it was real humour for what Liverpool people are like. So, you know, it had all those ingredients, which I think, I'm not I'm biased, but no other soap had really, even EastEnders. Oh no, it was East, definitely unique. EastEnders became a very serious, you know, bit down, you know, and and of course Corrie is a, is a national treasure, but it doesn't didn't reflect real life after a time. Those streets. But it was don't... a bit more like a cosy sitcom at that point, wasn't it? When you were in yeah. Brookside. So you know, I thought it was very far ahead of its time, and it's it, it lo- something local people could relate to. And um, well, work sorry, not local working class people could relate to, wasn't it? And yeah, I suppose take from. I mean, with, there was a lot of pride in Liverpool. I take it about Brookside. Did you ever come across anybody that um, actually didn't like Brookside and said, "Oh, it doesn't reflect." Um, us no well no no i've not no i think you know wherever you went in the country people thought it was a great reflection of liverpool mm. they thought it was endearing to liverpool you know what i mean wherever you go yeah. and london everywhere they loved it you know and so you were bound to be proud of it weren't you it's like our teams they're really good football teams mm. they reflect you know the the, the city and the people well, I always find that those that criticise it, it's, it's actually nothing to do with the programme itself. It's just the fact that it's classed as a soap. And there's a lot of snobbishness mm. about soaps, isn't there, in the industry and with certain people and stuff. I mean, I have to admit, I don't actually watch any of the soaps nowadays. Mm. Um, I just don't have time. They're, just, they're on every day now. I mean, back in your day, when you were both in Brooks, yeah. it used to be twice a week, didn't it? And, yeah. I really wish it would go back to that. It was so much more fun back then. You'd really look forward to it then, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you weren't saturated. You didn't have many channels, yeah. Well, that's it, two or three times a week, and then you got the Saturday Omnibus, and I used to think that was perfect, and now they're, like, on every single night, so I think they've... You know. And also, they're repeating... The the How many storylines can you come up with? They're repeating them all yeah. the time, because it's on that much. You've got to keep coming up with new storylines, and there isn't any. Yeah, well, that's it. And I thought another thing is there wasn't like, you know, in Brookside back in the day, we could watch, uh, for instance, I know we said this last time, actually, you know, we could sit and watch a scene with just the core kills, uh, sat around a table, just having a discussion uh, mm. about anything, really. And we could sit and watch that for like five or ten minutes. Nowadays, you wouldn't get anything like that. It's got to be dramatic storyline after dramatic storyline. and mm. A bit yeah. like the kitchen sink drama type of thing, but mm. in a yeah. soap, yeah. Because we were, yeah. I know Mark Burgess was saying when I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago, he was saying, like, you know, in Brookside, you could just sit and watch Bill Dean, for instance, like just sat in his <laughs> armchair reading a newspaper and then just having a little conversation with Harry, um, yeah. uh, with Ralph, sorry, Ralph. his yeah. friend, or, uh, you know, Edna. So, yeah, yeah it's definitely unique, Brookside. We were yeah. lucky, yeah, we were. We used to have yeah. And stuff, well, that's know. why I'm so uh, keen to get it repeated and stuff. It's just a case of I don't, th- you know. Otherwise, it's not going to be it's, for it to not be aired ever again. Um, just seems such a waste when it made the mark that it made and the careers it launched, and it just doesn't seem yeah. quite right. But we'll yeah. get there, like, like I said. Some, yeah, like some weird deliberate thing that they're purposely not showing it. It, yeah. it feels like that sometimes, especially when people were calling out for it and. You know, mm. I've presented this petition so many times and I get the generic response that, you know, we'll log your... Yeah. Uh, so well, I'm going to keep on. They keep We're going. nearly 7,000 signatures <laughs> now. <laughs> as long as we get our repeats, we can, we're we with you, mate. <laughs> yeah, get your repeat <laughs> either as well, yeah. Oh, yeah, we get paid for that, don't we? Yeah, we will. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, you can write me a cheque afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do that. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, right. Um, jo- uh, Justy, sorry to bring back some bad memories for you now, but uh, Tracy gave Monty a Swiss roll. What do those <laughs> me- words mean to you? Because I gather you got quite a bit of abuse in the street for those. Yeah. Um, it was in school, it was all good banter because I grew up in McGull and it's it's nice place. Um, 
and I, I, I got it quite easy in school, but I know my mate Tommy wrote on one of the um, <laughs> desks in, with a, what, what's it called? Not a compass. Is it the, the well, sharp yeah. thing? Yeah. yeah, compass, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tracy gave Monty a Swiss roll and it was just in the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, that wasn't that, because I know that um, you said you were quite laid back about that story, weren't you? Because nowadays, 34 yeah. years later since that happened, mm. um, because Tracy was 15 at the time, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, and the guy, the teacher was 26. And how, what it turned out was, um, Billy and uh, Doreen did decided not to press charges against this teacher because it would have came out that Tracy was the one that instigated it, which... I thought, well, he's still old enough to know better. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I remember you saying you didn't even consider it that serious at the time, did you? Yeah, it was in the paper. I remember there was a little, um, one of the Tories objected to it. Oh, um, right. Right, really? Yeah. I think I might still have the news cutting somewhere. Um, oh, I can't remember his name. Um, and the, they'd objected to it. Obviously, they didn't stop it getting shown but they'd shown some concern about the story which is quite ironic because it was a Tory um, and <laughs> it was That's a um, surprise yeah which just sort of publicised it more so oh the irony sorry I just took a few seconds yeah. to twig onto that yeah, yeah the irony yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah it. I didn't even really think about it to be honest I just used to go to work and do my job and go home and but you were 15, so you don't really think about it, do you? I didn't, we didn't think, I didn't really think about it at the time, but now looking back, I'm just thinking if that happened now, God, there'd be like moral if outrage it, from people and... Yeah, because if it does happen in real life, it, yeah, it is, it's shocking, it's it, it's it's bad. They'd be all safeguarding and, um, you know... Because essentially what it was, it was child grooming in a way, even though she was yeah. the one that came on to him, it would yeah. be classed as child grooming now, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because she was underage as well. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but uh, that was the, one of the first big storylines for the Corfields. That's yes, what, because you'd only been there a couple of months. And, uh, our uh, family went up after that the, that, uh, that yeah. storyline. That Is that what you really was, felt like you'd won the viewers over by, with that story? Yeah, that was, it yeah. been that long. And then that storyline came out, and, it, and we were in it quite a bit then, and they got to know us, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, and uh, and it sort of uh, gives us our big acceptance with the with the rest of the viewers. Mm. And of course, Billy beat was... him up, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. But, but then again, I'm the sure thing. lots of dads in the same position <laughs> would have done exactly yeah. the same. Here's the like tubular chairs. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Across the chairs. That was the first scene that I was in with someone, like which was really emotional, and yeah. <laughs> you you wouldn't. Do your full performance in rehearsal. <laughs> and I remember John grabbing me by the shoulders and just going, You did what they said. <laughs> I was like, Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you can actually see my face go from normal to. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had to cry and stuff so with Kate in, Fitzgerald. It was quite an emotional scene, wasn't it? Act. Justin's a natural actress. She just reacts to <laughs> stuff, which <laughs> And she just, she just like takes it, which is brilliant. It's absolutely it was brilliant. a very good scene. Yeah, the bottle was... went a bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you two, I've just got to say, just reminding me, I don't know if you saw a clip I put on a couple of months ago when we did the first one. Yeah. And it was from a documentary, and it was Lloyd Grossman. Oh, uh, yeah. And it was actually a piece about your the, the cork hills arriving. And he said in his voice, he goes... And as soon as you clapped eyes on them, you just thought, these are the family from hell. And I thought, it's a bit um, harsh, isn't it? <laughs> Would you describe the Cork Hills as a family from hell? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> well, she, I wouldn't like to live next door to them, would you? <laughs> no, no. Doreen, she was very, very nosy as well, wasn't she? And she was very yeah. sort of... She was pretentious. She was trying to be well-to-do, but she said on that documentary that she was told to play it as though she was somebody that had ideas above her station which i thought she conveyed really really well she, yeah, she did uh, she did kate she was great she, was, she played that to, uh, aspiring middle class you know she wanted to have all those nice things like the collinses have and be respectable and everything like that and we kept pulling it down <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
No. Kate was funny. She'd walk over to the set, wouldn't she, with a Marlboro? Yeah. <laughs> even when she was in costume, she'd have her yeah. own handbag on her arm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and remember the fluffy slippers, the mules? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need a clip clopping across the clothes. <laughs> Did you see her in uh, Benidorm more recently? No, no, no. I didn't see her. Oh, you'll have to watch that. She is. She was very funny in that. She was a bit like a Madge kind of character. I don't know if you've ever watched it before, but it was a bit of like a Madge character. Right. Yeah. She I'll plays it to a. T she plays it really well. She is funny. Right. Well, she is good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, just to bring some traumatic memories for you there, Justine, about the uh, graffiti walls. <laughs> That's um, all right. John. Now. Some of your uh, first post Brookside TV roles include, sounds like I'm doing a This Is Your Life now, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> include Underbella, Underbelly, sorry, Thacker, Firm Friends, Spender, Cracker, Wycliffe, and The Beat Goes On. I remember that one well, to name just some. And then in 1996, you starred alongside Dame Helen Mirren as DCS Ballinger in mm. Prime Suspect 5. Uh, and I know you've got a story to tell us about Helen wanting that to actually be the last in the series. Do you remember what we discussed last time? Yeah, I mean, when I got to know Helen, she was great. You know, she was like, broke the ice and that, and we got chatting. And um, she used to let me, like, if I had any ideas about the scene ending, she used to say, what do you think, John? And I'd say, well, I'd do, you know, I'd do this or that. And she said, um, I said, is this your last? Uh, are you doing any more after this? And she said, no. I said, well, why don't I let the street kill you in the end, which was the, the bad guy in it. Steve McIntosh. Yeah, Steve McIntosh's character. I said, he points the gun at her, and I said, why don't you just kill you? It'd be great. She went, it would be fantastic, John. That's a really good idea. I'll go and see the producer tomorrow. Anyway, the producer came to me, and he went, what are you doing? Give an idea. <laughs> <laughs> he asked me. He went, she wants killing off. We wanted to come back to do another one. <laughs> Well, it's not fair, isn't it? It's not up to me. <laughs> she went mad in the end. She came back and she said, they're not letting me, John. I've got to go with what's what. I said, OK, fair enough. <laughs> I only, you know, I only suggested it. But it would have well, been That would good. have been a very memorable ending to Prime Suspect, though, oh, I have yeah. to say. Yeah. That was Steve McIntosh's first TV role, I, was, I gather. Is that no, right? No, no, he'd done a lot of stuff before then. Oh, had he? He was, because he looked oh. really young in that role. Well, that was one of his first major roles, I think. Yeah, well, he was on that, but uh, no, it was it was lovely. She was lovely to work with, and I enjoyed every minute of it. You know, how like, long were you filming that? Um, took about series. three months to do that. Mm. It was a two-parter. It was two one and a half hour, you know, things. So mm. it took uh, took a few months, yeah. But it was great. Enjoyed it. Now, what's but there was your opinion of the ending of that episode? Because I I, I think it was pretty obvious. He was prepared to let. Um, Steve McIntosh's character shooter. Well, I think so. He was, he was, but then he thought, no, she's not going to do anything. She's not going to go anywhere. I'll get rid of him instead. Mm. That's why he put his arm up. So that yeah, he... just but just what before it was when he was about to shoot, I noticed he put his arm up, and then suddenly yeah. got blown away. The arm response kill him because yeah. he he's got something on me, and I don't want him to talk. So I had him killed. So it was, yeah, no. But uh, there, was, there, was, there was one program yeah, you haven't mentioned, but I loved more than anything. It was called Finney, right? Oh, was, I have got that mentioned somewhere. But it was with Dave Morrissey. You showed a clip on that thing with it, with me and Andy Circus, who yeah. were outside the door. And I loved playing the character. What, what happened was it, it was set in Newcastle. And when we all went for the read through, when I've been cast as it, I can't do a Geordie accent. So... <laughs> they all expected me to do a Geordie accent. Uh, David Morrissey was doing one, Andy Circus was doing one, and a few all the all the rest. And they went from Newcastle. When it got to me, I did it Scouse, <laughs> and they said, "What's going on here?" And I said, "Well, he's a, he's a gangster from Liverpool, and he's on the run in Newcastle." And they all went. He's, he's <laughs> and they went. That means you can't do the accent. I went, "No, I can, but I'm doing it." this way <laughs> and the thing was i made the character so nervous all the time but he's a bag of nerves uh, this guy this character louis his name is because the, this gangster uh said he'll kill him if he doesn't do this job for him and I, so i made him totally nervous all the time so he was always going what was that was it, 
what are you look at me? What's going on? And I made him totally net and they went, we'll have to capitalise on this. And there's a bit in it where uh, I've got a, a tape on me and this bloke's got a gun on me and he's going, where's the tape? And I'm, I'm, I go, it's here. And I give him the tape and he shoots me, right? But on this particular take, he went, give me the, ta give me the tape. And I went, all right. Oh, and I'd forgot to put the tape in me pocket. You know, <laughs> prop, and I'm going, the tape, you want the tape? And they're going, yeah. And I went, I haven't got it. And they went, <laughs> I'll have to shoot you. I said, well, you wouldn't shoot me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and they kept filming it. <laughs> and I went, I haven't got the tape. I forgot to put it in my pocket. <laughs> and he went, shot me. <laughs> oh. And what year was that, Finney? Finney, it was, I had so much fun on. Everyone got killed in it except the two people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. I got killed in episode four. And it was like, it was just like, and the director at the end, he made a tape of all the killings. You know, it was like a, it was like a, an outtake of yeah. everyone got, you know, blown up or whatever. And they asked me to do this getaway in the getaway car. And the director said, I want it to be the worst getaway ever. I don't want it to be slick. I don't want it to be fast. So I said, okay. You were used to doing that in Brookie though, weren't you, John? Oh, yes. <laughs> Driving all over <laughs> gardens, <laughs> yes. But in this, I, I left Andy Circus, right? He was supposed to get in the car with me. And, and he's going, where are you going? <laughs> and I'm going, I'm going, <laughs> going. So we had to run, get in the car. I hit two bins and I stalled it, crunched the gears. And the crew were just killing themselves, laughing. The crew were on the floor. <laughs> and they kept it in. They kept the whole thing in. Well, man. I'm going to have to watch that series. I think it's on I think it's on YouTube or it's on Daily Motion or something. Or if it's on DVD, I'll have to find it out. Have a look at that scene, the getaway, where we go to kill some man. <laughs> well, now you've, yeah, exactly. Now you've told me that story. I'm going to, I want to watch that scene now. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Uh, oh, Justine, it's all right. I was just wondering which question we're up to then. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> in uh, early 1998, uh, you starred in Brookside's educational spin-off series called South with the late uh, Sean McGee playing your boyfriend, Jamie Henderson. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that series and, of course, working with the late Sean? Yeah, um, it was great because Jonathan Andrews called us up to the office and I was thinking, oh, God, we're in trouble for something. Um, and it wasn't, they were said Thames Television are interested in going and, you know, filming this thing. And um, it sounded great. Um, it hadn't been written in anything then. So Frank Cottrell Boyce wrote it and he wrote a lovely two-parter. Um, and then I remember the first night I was going down to London and my dad basically had to drag me to the station because I was going, I don't want to go. <laughs> I don't like being away from home. Yeah. He had to like fling me on the train. But it was funny because, like, Bucky was so down to earth. And then next thing I'm working with Thames and I got picked up. I was only staying with my auntie in Croydon. I could have stayed in a nice hotel, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to be on my own. No. But I had, like, a limousine come and pick me up <laughs> with a chauffeur. Very, very nice. Funny, like, booted up chauffeur with the hat on and all that. <laughs> and um, he dragged me to Croydon. And it was this little road of terraced houses. And it, they used to pick me up about half five of the morning. And it was in winter, so it was pitch black. And my auntie Sharon said, oh, all the neighbours are out. And they were, they were all out, like, look, at <laughs> this limousine had pulled oh. up and I'd get out. And, and then um, they'd pick me up overnight as well. Or if we were moving locations, <laughs> everyone else would have to get on the bus. <laughs> and I had this chauffeur. <laughs> no, no, you had the chauffeur. Did Sean have the chauffeur as well? No, I wouldn't let anyone in, did I? Wanted <laughs> <laughs> the place yourself. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> <laughs> and what about working with Sean? Because he was—he looked like he was quite a tough character in real life. I thought. Yeah, he, yeah, he was great, Sean. Um, he, it was um completely different to working on on Brookie. It was like yeah. we had like sorry Winnie Bagos when we were on location. Um, you, you were just. We were spoilt rotten, really, really spoiled. And working on film, oh God, I loved working on film. A lot slower, but um, the outcome, it, it looked lovely. It was really, really it good did. shots. 
very grand on the um, you know you had like lots of location shots didn't you and yeah had that yeah. feel the only thing on youtube is they um they i think they've um, for copyright reasons obviously when i try and watch south on um youtube they've like dimmed all the music down dulled have you mm. noticed that before because there's oh, a no, sound so song playing at the end i think of um, your scene where you're leaving i think Mm. Do you remember that? Yeah, the Sam Cooke one. Yeah, I, I know I've still got the version of it with the music on, but I must have uh, downloaded it ages ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, to, to see, I, God, we went to the viewing of it in, um, I think it was Channel 4, Tottenham Court Road, we went, and there was like a big screen, um, and we were, you know, we were all invited, and Frank was there, and Sean and I, and they had invitations on, but it was like me and Sean on the invitation and like a running order. And I was like, God, this is like really, really like amazing. I, co I couldn't get over it. And then when it started with the Christians playing with the coach on the motorway, I mean, I just had no idea it was going to look like that. Mm. And it was um, directed by um, Peter Guasso as well, who I thought was oh. a brilliant director. He used to get shouted at a bit because remember Johnny do things that other. Hello. Hello. Directors would sink in and stuff, and um, I think it was. Oh, you're back. Yeah. All right. Hello? You froze then for a moment, Justin. I was panicking yeah, there, yeah. thinking, "Oh God, the first technical glitch of the night." Just yeah. when we were doing all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, there I was one scene in, in the court. Yeah, I want to see the, the first episode where... of that South. Sorry. Not... Yeah, like we'll have to. Have to um, sorry. Yes. Yeah. No, sorry. You carry on, Justin. I'm interrupting sorry, you. Sorry, you say it. Yeah, there was, there, was, there was one scene in the Corkill's kitchen and you couldn't have a view from the sink because the wall was there. Oh, yeah. And Peter put an ironing board and he had Doreen washing the dishes. You couldn't see the ironing board. So he could get from behind the sink. And I think Phil made him do it again, didn't he, John? Didn't yeah. he have to re yeah. refilm it, that? It was good, though. That I thought it was a brilliant idea, wasn't it? Yeah. It was it still was. in the house. Yeah, totally. And it looked but he said it made it look like a set, yeah, didn't he? It looked he? real. It looked really good. Yeah. But he was brilliant, Peter. And on set in London, he was amazing. Um, just really easy to work with. Just dead nice he, fella. He was a perfectionist, though, wasn't he, Peter? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. You, yeah. you had to be spot on with Peter because, you know, yeah. he, he wanted it to look really good, and he did. And you, oh, you he did, did, yeah. Didn't mind doing it I for him. I that, though. Yeah, I do, yeah. I'd sooner have someone, you know, say, do it out again. You can do it better or, you know, we'll try something new, you know, and he was good at that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Cool. Oh, it was a great series. I want to see, because the first episode of South um, on YouTube, is, there's no sound on it whatsoever. Isn't there? I tried watching it. I'm just like, oh, no, I was really gutted. I've got this. The second episode works. But again, like I said, all the music, like the Sam Cooke song at the end, all... Just, I'll send you I, my copies. Yeah, please. I'd like to see it. I was thinking the music would have made it so much more effective because it was quite an emotional scene between you and Sean at the end. And it was like, yeah. oh, is she going to go back to uh, Liverpool with him or not? And it yeah. looked like she wasn't. Yeah. And there was a song played. It was really, really good. Because that was an educational series, wasn't it? It was. It was the English programme. Um, yeah. Which, I mean, I, I just never used to know anything that was going on. I just used to turn up for things and go <laughs> home. And I didn't even know it was the <laughs> Well, you do when you're a kid, don't you? <laughs> I didn't even know it was the English programme. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been a oh, big Because yeah, they used to do ITV in the 80s, I think, before they had This Morning and stuff. They used to do ITV school programmes, didn't they? During yeah. the daytime, yeah. is that right? Mm? Yeah. And then Australian yeah. soap operas all afternoon, if I remember rightly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right, well, I'll move to the next question. Oh, yeah, but please, Justin, please do send me a copy of that. I'd yeah, love to it. Which one were we on? John, lost. Oh, yes, John, it's for you. Sorry. <laughs> Getting okay. myself mixed up now. Um, yeah, because, John, you starred alongside EastEnders actress Lindsay Colson in a TV series called Out of Hours, playing a doctor, I believe. Because yeah. I always thought that was a shame that it only ran for one series. Uh, it was a shame for me because I loved it. Because it was yeah. Dominic, Dominic West, was, uh, it was his launch. It was the first thing he'd ever done, and he was playing the other doctor. It was me, Lindsay, and him. And uh, 
it was about doctors on night calls. Mm. So it was all set, so all the, it was all night shoots. So you were like shooting all night, and it was like uh, it was so good to play this doctor because he was a doctor who had a motorbike, and I had to learn to drive a a five hundred cc motorbike. So they gave me like a Suzuki Bandit, in the, and I went and had lessons. And in the end, and I remember uh, I had to take it around Birmingham because it was all shot in Birmingham. And, uh, and I remember Dominic West getting on the back and going, come on, John, let's go for a spin. So we, we went around Birmingham on this bike, right? And we didn't have any radios or, or uh, we didn't have any phones with us. And uh, I, I couldn't find a way back to the set, right? So I said, how are we, we going to get back to the set? We've got to finish this scene. And he went, I'll just keep driving back. <laughs> so we were, we were driving around Birmingham on a motorbike for like two hours. They'd sent out all these runners to find us because they couldn't get do any shooting and in the end we could, we could, like just a bit just, just in time to with a bit of light to do it how were the residents in birmingham how did they treat you because birmingham's up the road from me you see is it no they were brilliant we stayed in the cop dorm and uh we, we were there for like three months and just, i just loved it and um, um, it was sad it went, never went for another series though because i thought it was you know it was a good program mm. No, I remember yeah. it. Obviously, it's been a long time since I watched it, but I've, it seemed to be add the ingredients of something that was going to sort of kind of like run on and on kind of thing. So yeah. Yeah. It's strange, wasn't it? So. Yeah. No, I enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. But it's what it's like one of the, those things you do. You think a, a series is going to take off and it doesn't. And you just, you know, that's it. Because it's a shame though, when it, I can imagine it must be gut wrenching when that, things like that happen. Well, especially when it's something you like, you know what I mean? It's. Mm. it's it, it's something you really like because I, I did a thing yeah. called the Caslets, the Caslet Chronicles, which was all posh people in it, except for me. I was the chauffeur, and uh, I remember it was like there was a. I went into the um, makeup, and there was Samantha Bond in the makeup. Not Samantha Bond, was it? Yeah, I've forgotten. It. Margaret Tyzak. There's all these very posh actresses in there, and I went, oh god, here they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they were going, they were going, that chap from Brookside's in it, you know, that McArdle's doing it. <laughs> oh, I love Brookside. It was wonderful. Oh. And it's nice to have him on board and all this. And I was going, oh, at first I thought they were going to be really snobby, but they weren't. They were really nice. Yeah. Really accepting of me, you know. And they were Brookside fans Very as snobby. well. Yeah. Yeah they, yeah, they were. They were all like, yeah, real fans of the programme. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, John. Um, ah, Justin, because I was dying to ask you about this, because I loved it when Tracy got with Barry Grant, of course, played by uh, Paul Usher, because I thought they were a good couple. So I just wondered, how was it working with Paul Usher? Because um, I can imagine he must have been exciting as well, because he's quite an, he was an edgy character, played an edgy character. Yeah, yeah. He, he was lovely, Paul. Um, he's a really good actor. And I mean, I think I, I said this last time. <laughs> He'd sort of look at the script about five seconds before he was about to start filming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'd be thinking, because I like knew my lines from the second I was given them, because if I'm told to do something, I'm like, oh, yeah, right, I'll, you know, I'll do that. And I'd, I'd make sure I knew my lines. So I'd be on pins then. But it makes for a better performance because it would give you some energy. Um, mm. And he was a bit like you, John. You didn't know where he was going to go sometimes as yeah. well. Yeah. You were just seeing somewhere else, and you'd be like, "Oh, <laughs> catch you on your toes." Yeah. yeah, but it was it was good, and he, you know, he was lovely. He, he was lovely to work with. Um, I was sad when that story ended because I thought it was a good storyline as well. It was. It was really I good. You, sorry, go on, John. No, I'm saying it was a really good storyline. I, I thought, and they they really worked well together as well, which was great. Yeah. They and did because I don't know if you saw a comment between, on. Yeah. Go on, there sorry, Justine. Between, there was chemistry between the, the two yeah. characters as well. Well, that sort of, even though they split up, that sort of carried on right until uh, Tracy left, I thought, because he confided in her quite a lot, didn't he, Barry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he wanted to get yeah. her back, didn't he? And she wasn't interested. And you No, know, what I was going to tell you before is somebody, I don't know if you saw the comment, but somebody commented on Twitter, it was quite a while ago, a scene with you and Paul, and I said, oh, I think the producers missed a trick. By splitting those two up, because they would have gone on to have yeah. been a, you know, a really good, funny, feisty couple, and I think that. Yeah. 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 I think um, I think when they knew that they wanted me to go, they just started running me storylines down, and um, 
yeah. you know, you get the. Oh, you know, I, I, I thought it was, I just thought it was the, the end of the relationship too prematurely. It didn't need, it didn't need to end when it did. But, no. And it was almost forced, the ending. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, she had an abortion in the end, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. It was a shame. Yeah. But it was some great scenes with you and Paul, though. Yeah, they, they were my favourite stories. And that was my favourite little purple patch, I suppose in the show and Sue Johnson was living in the house so I was working with Sue and John yeah. and Paul um, yeah. it, was a, it, was it was a nice little time that wasn't it John? <laughs> loads of conflict there wasn't there? Loads of it especially when, oh, there was. Uh, especially when Doreen comes back. Oh, I loved it when Doreen came back yes but some really good scenes with you and John uh, with you and yeah. Kate on that yeah, yeah. Um, and then you'd have Dean Sullivan and Mickey Stark coming in now and then. Well, they just let themselves in, wouldn't they? Like the comic yeah. element. And, and yeah, they, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I'm going to say, it's quite a family affair because once Billy had married Sheila, then obviously Barry and Tracy would have been stepbrother and stepsister, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. yeah they I don't would, know yeah. how that would have worked, would it? I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was just something that came to me. I thought, I know, I hadn't thought about that before. It was just, and, and also... I think uh, Paul uh, Paul Usher's character it was it was loved uh, getting together with the with uh, Tracy because it was winding me up something terrible yeah. you know what yes. I mean because you two had a really good uh, kerfuffle outside didn't you a good fight you and, and Paul did, Usher yeah. and oh, another one of them scenes yeah where everyone's going ah! because <laughs> this was all one take stuff I gather wasn't it you were just were you just told to sort of like go for it or did you practice we had, before we had a fight director and Paul went for me and I chimmed him and he chimmed me back and it was like, <laughs> we were on the floor like grappling with shirts ripped off and everything. Mud. And, then, and, then, and then Dean is supposed to come in with this line and he forgets and we're in the middle of fighting. <laughs> come on! <laughs> and he went, oh, I'm sorry. We have to oh. do it again. <laughs> if he just said to them to go for it, they were going to go for it. Because <laughs> yeah, it didn't look, it, it looked completely real. Because you do look at fights in some programs, and you think, "Oh God, that looks really staged and choreographed." But not that fight between you and Billy. I'll have, I've got the clip somewhere yeah. anyway. I'll have to dig that out. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, John, because uh, you're acting TV seat. Oh, oh Gusty, you've, got... you've gone. Oh no, she haven't. She's gone upside down. You're upside down Sorry, now. Uh, I've got a dead leg. Sorry, I keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're still on air. We thought, I thought, oh God, we're going to freeze now. So, so oh, John, you're, act, you're uh, sorry, are you all right? Yeah. Yeah. He's he's not <laughs> Stick some blue tack on it. <laughs> Won't move. It? You're yeah. off, right. Because, John, your TV, uh, acting TV, reads like an A to Z of popular TV dramas um, of the last 30 years, you know, since Brookside. Because um, appearances include the likes of uh, Casualty, Playing the Field, Heart's Beat, Where the Heart Is, uh, and just trying to read my writing, and then you played a headmaster again, because uh, you played a headmaster, Mr Todd, in Brookside um, in 1984, in uh, There's Only One Jimmy Grimble, alongside, oh, yeah. yeah, some great actors of um, some of my favourites, Robert Carlyle and Ray Winston. Um, so I just wonder what it was like working with those two. Ray Winston, is he still the daddy? Well, I, I worked with Ray you know, on Underbelly. And, uh, oh, and God, it, yeah, that was the series. Is that the prison series? Yeah, he played my henchman in that. Yeah. He, was the, he was the one that uh, taught me the Cockney accent to do, you know, in that, in that programme. Because I, uh, I used to say, because my character was like the big drugs baron. Mm. And he said, drugs baron don't always look hard. You know, they look, you know, they look like ordinary guys. He said, like, you know, you wouldn't know who they were. He says, and they're very laid back and cool and calm and they don't get angry. He said, they do it very soft and slowly. And I was talking like that. He said, don't open your mouth, just talk like that. He said, don't open it, don't even say. He says, he says, oh, I'll talk like this. He says, you know, you know <laughs> he said, but your character doesn't open his mouth. He talks like that. So he helped me with the character, Ray. Eh? Anyway. I'd, I'd done the underbelly with him and then I hadn't worked with him again for 10 years. Mm. And then when we were doing Jimmy Grimble, he'd become a bigger star. So he'd done films and everything. Anyway, me and John Henshaw were sharing the Winnie Bago and Ray had his own and his name was outside. So I said, I'll go and see if he's there. So I knocked on his Winnie Bago 
and he, he opened the door and he just had his on, undies on, big fat belly hanging over. And I went, I said, Oh, yeah, Ray. He went, he went, I said, You haven't changed, have you? He says, No, I'm just fatter and richer. <laughs> 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 and he was just brilliant, Ray. He was just like, Never changed a bit. That's how he Very down to earth. But I got on really well with Robert Carlyle because he's another one who loved Brookside. And he, oh. I, I used to sit there. The Winnie Bago, and he said, Me and David Heyman used to watch the Cork Hills. He loved the Cork Hills, he said. And uh, he said, So, you know, I've seen you, all your work and all that. So it was really nice to hear from him, you know, all that. Mm. And it's a shame that film could have been, it could have been bigger, but it came out the same time, mm. Billy Elliot. And it was mm. about it was about two young guys, two young lads. One was a footballer, and then he got the ballet dancer, but that was the more popular one. So yeah. Jimmy Grimble sort of suffered with that, with that, the publicity of the other one. You wouldn't have got away with your Scouse accent in Billy Elliot, would you, John? <laughs> no. We <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, man. <laughs> Nervous Scouse. Well, John, I've got to tell you that underbelly that you've, um, I can't find it on DVD. I can't find it on the bloody uh, internet. Have you got a copy of it anywhere? I haven't, no. You can no. Get on YouTube. Oh, it is I, on YouTube. I saw some of it on YouTube. I just put Underbelly BBC Two Drama. Ah, okay. Because I, I want to see that. Yeah. Because I no, obviously I was reading it in your book. You say so. So it, it, it was it was like the first thing I did after Brookside. Then it was like like Justine said it when she did the did her thing. It was like uh, on film, and it was just like four minutes a day shooting. It was just luxury. Yeah. You know what I mean? Limousines picking you up at all hours and stuff. Yeah. It was it's just like, you know, different Get world. That. Different world altogether, you know, and sort of working with all these, you know, wonderful people. Mm. But uh but the, the other thing I was gonna mention too was that the the, the uh, jobs I had in Australia and stuff were fantastic as well. Mm. Uh, I did a series in Australia, mm. uh, the Dingo Baby, and uh, and they flew out Kathy and uh, jo and Joe. Joe was only eight at the time, and I was out in uh, Brisbane, and I had three weeks off, and they said, do you want to go home? And I went, no, nah, it's a bit far for two weeks off, you know. And they said, have you got a family? And said, I said, yeah, they said, get them out, mate. So they paid for them to come over and join me. Oh, great. Oh, lovely. Best job I ever had, that was. And it was like, you know, they just kept giving you all these per diems every day. And I said, what's all this money? And they said, oh, that's going out and have a meal, or <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Like, it was just real kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, so that was, you know, one of the perks of, you know, working abroad, you know. Well, you'd lived in Australia when you were a kid, hadn't you? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no I wasn't a kid. I was a young man. I was like young man, sorry, yes. 19. Well, that was obviously going back to your book because I do have a question for that. Yeah. Um, but firstly, uh... oh, yeah, Justin, I just wanted to remember because I... Put a clip of this on the other night remembering the time where tracy was with barry grant and there was that big story concerning um the young lad liam who became uh, yeah. totally yeah. besotted with you because there was one thing i remember you saying that you didn't think tracy would quite do wouldn't have and that put was up with that. when liam kept knocking he kept coming back and kept knocking the door and i honestly thought that tracy would have just like said like liam two words and just slammed the door in his yeah. face. But she kept letting him in every time didn't she were yeah. you happy with that story? I didn't mind the story. And to be honest, I don't even think I realised at the time. It's looking back now, I go, mm. no, she wouldn't have put up with that. No. It was um, it was totally out of character for her to have allowed someone to persistently annoy her. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, she just, yeah, the door would have been shut and that would have been the end of it. Um, or with her been temperament. Closed slung out the, the, the salon, yeah. Um, so I don't... Obviously, there, there had to be some build-up to the ending, do you know what I mean? The, you know, the, the, the end bit of the storyline. But um, I thought it was a little bit clumsy for the character. Mm. Um, I didn't think it was true to her. But I, I didn't mm. think that at the time. I, I kind of, yeah. You just sort of went along with it, things. don't you? Well, I would question things, but for some reason, I think it looked different on the telly than when we were filming it. Mm. Um, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it does. Mm. yeah. I enjoyed it though, because his name was Adam Sunderland, wasn't it? 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That from the yeah. hind yeah. I remember the hind soup advert or something Rose years and years ago. Yeah. 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 Well, I was only a little boy then, but I do remember that because that was <laughs> the first thing that came <laughs> to my mind was oh, it's him from yeah. the soup ad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm so nice lad. Yeah. Is he still acting, do you know? I don't know. I don't know. I well, it's one of these know, things you honest. lose touch with so many people. You meet so many people along yeah. the years yeah. and then you lose touch, don't you? So, okay. Oh, John, because we were talking about this before, because in 2001, you starred in the series The Gazettes, uh, Cazette, based on the novels uh, The Cazalette Chronicles by Elizabeth Jane Howard. Um, yeah. And you had a different accent in that. How, were you, how did you find the accent in that? Well, that, that, that was what the one I learned from Ray Winston, wasn't it? It was yeah. the cop- East Ender. He was an East Ender guy. So, and and well, also well, pretty easy. Yeah. Also, the also the girl who was playing opposite me, who was playing my wife, was Claire Hackett, who's from The Will. So we both had like <laughs> Scouse Cockney accents. Yeah. <laughs> we, had, like, <laughs> we both had the same. <laughs> well, I was just getting into that scene on your show reel. She just told him that she um, it wasn't the the sun wasn't his or something, and you just looked completely. And then obviously it went into another clip. So I want to seek that out as well. Yeah. Yeah. That should have gone for a second series as well. <laughs> yeah, it because it was well received by the public, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. It was good costume drama, you know, it was one good one. Well, that's because another one is, because um, BBC are quite notorious for doing this, quite kind of cutting uh, series short after like once or a couple of series, because Mersey Beat seemed like it was something that was going to go on and on, like The Bill or something like that, and then it, yeah, they stopped it after four series. Yeah, they did. Yeah, shame really because they uh, they changed actresses. They got Le- uh, Leslie Ash in uh, because Hayden Gwynn left. So they changed like too many people, and I think when you do that, mm-hmm. you just get into a load of regular characters, and then you change about three or four of them for one part of the series, and it loses viewers. So because it, it was set in Liverpool as well, it was set you know, and it was shot in Liverpool. So it's a shame that something that could have gone on and on and employed local actors, which it did, mm. like Brookside did, uh, that it was stopped, you know. And I think it was more to do with uh, London not liking a, having a, a Liverpool cop show, I think, for some reason. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Michelle Holmes was in that, wasn't she? Was she in the cast? Yeah, the Michelle film? was Yeah, Michelle was in that, yeah. Was oh, well, you've been with... Haven't you done uh, something with Michelle in Firm Friends? I've worked with Michelle quite a few times, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, because obviously I always think, well, the third, I know she's done lots of things since, but I always think of Rita Sue and Bob too, of course. Yeah, everybody does, of course. Yeah, you <laughs> can't forget it, can you? Brilliant, <laughs> brilliant film, that was. Oh, it is. Yeah. I get moral outrage every time I post a clip of that, though, but it's like it was of its time, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, George Costigan, great. <laughs> oh, God, Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Justine, I've already done that question because it was about your return to Thingy. So I'm going to go to the questions now. There's a question from, there's just one from uh, Kira Mahoney. Um, I asked it last time, but obviously it didn't, we didn't record. Well, I didn't record it, so I'm going to ask again. Um, firstly, a guy called, a lad called Kira Mahoney is a big fan of Brookside. He's asking if you could both say hello to him. Hi, Hi Kieran. All right, Kieran. There you go. I hope that's made your night, Kieran. And his question's quite an interesting one, even though we've just been discussing something similar with this, with you, Justine. Um, and it's to you as well, John. It's about Brookside. Did you ever think there were any... Um, were there ever instances where you thought your character wouldn't have said or done that, for instance? So, Justine, I'll come to you first. Not particularly at the time. I think if there was, I can't remember, and I probably would have said something. Um, and to be honest, if I didn't like something, like a phrase, I probably would have just changed it and subtly to something that someone that age would have said. Mm. Um, but it was only the looking back story, as we were just looking back at that story, we were just talking about and thinking, yeah, that, that wasn't quite, it just needed tweaking a bit. Mm. Okay. And John? Yeah. Well, I, I had quite a big one, really. It was, uh, it was after Doreen left, and the producer at the time had given me this speech where he slags her off and says he did, never loved her. And it was all contradictory to what I'd built up for in the years I'd been married to Doreen. And I said, I, I can't say any of these lines. I went in mm. and said, I, I can't say them. 
And he went, well, you have to, you know, you that's your own contract. I said, well, I'm not saying them. So I, I did a Sean, really. <laughs> I was oh, pushing yeah. him. And I went, well, you'll have to get rid of me then. I don't know what, you know, I just can't. So then Phil got involved and someone else and they, they cut it right out in the end. But I couldn't. It was just contradictory. Someone hadn't done the homework, really. Like Justine, uh, the, she cuts things as she went along without without telling them, which is the best way, yeah. really. In a way, but I oh, couldn't there was get... one, yeah. There was, and that's right, John. I mean, yeah. that's what I was saying before about the actors having integrity then and yeah. knowing the character and caring about it. Uh, there was one when they asked me to wear a bikini. Oh, right. And I just said no. And they were like, well, you'll have to. And I was like, well, no. And I yeah. came home and said to my dad, if if I lose my job, I lose my job, but I am not wearing the bikini. Yeah. I said, I've, I've got to walk around Liverpool. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I yeah. said, after that. And they, oh. they gave in in the end. Yeah. Didn't have to wear it. <laughs> Good for you. You stood your ground. Yeah. You have to sometimes. Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> well, obviously, you've like you said, you've built those characters up for years. And I think if something like that was not ringing true, then the viewers are going to pick up on it as well, aren't they? Well, it was ridiculous because it was in the back of the hairdresser's salon with a lad she'd just met. It was just a delivery lad and they were getting on a sunbed. And I was like, <laughs> I, I don't need to be in a bikini in this <laughs> little room with a stranger. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you got your way though in the end, Justine. And you, John. <laughs> well, I, well, yeah. There's yeah. no way I would have wearing it. Yeah. <laughs> Right, okay. Well, um, oh yes, this one. Um, John, just have to ask you about Emmerdale because obviously playing a gay character and you played it very well. Not that I ever doubted you, it was just you're one of those actors. It was. It's like if somebody told me Ray Winston was going to be playing a gay character, I'd be sort of like, oh, okay. And <laughs> you're sort of like so curious to see how you're uh, pulling it off. But it was a really like great scene. How did you find Emma working in Emmerdale? And, how different was it to working in Brookside all those years before? It, it was different in a lot of ways, but in other ways it was similar because mm. the people were lovely. The crew were lovely, like they were at Brookside and the actors were. So that, I loved every minute of that. And, you know, and I did 15 months on it and I loved it. And I loved playing that character, Ronnie, because uh, when, when they were discussing him playing gay and that, and I said, yeah, that's fine. I have no problem with that at all. I said, but I'm not playing him as a raving you know, sort of stereotype. <laughs> yeah, I said An because, because not everybody who gay is like that. You know, you yes. don't. You know, quite right. Yeah, look exactly. at butch me. I mean, I mean, I, I represent the the butch element of gay homosexuals. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to sort of you know, <laughs> you know, sort of do that stereotype. Anyway, and and also you weren't you don't find out he was a gay character until about four episodes, five episodes in. And mm. one of my brothers who's very macho and all that you know he's he's lovely i love him to death and that but apparently when uh it comes when i'm sat down with john bow and i put my hand on his and i said i've always loved you and i always will <laughs> my brother went is it my other brother said he went oh Rory went oh no <laughs> <laughs> i mean how did you how were the publics to you uh, playing a gay character? Did you get what were the people, you know, you get? Hey, yeah, I was in, the, in the, there's a, uh, there's a Marks and Spencers in, uh, in between Liverpool and Warrington. I don't know if you know, it's a big one. It's near yeah. Ikea, it's near Ikea. Mm -hmm. And I was in there with my wife, Cathy, you know, like that. And this woman went, oh, what are you doing with her? I said, that's my wife. And they went, we well, should be with the fella. And I said, well, he's not here. I'm going on with that, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> They're like saying, you know, yeah. Because there are these fans that actually don't know the difference between fiction and no. reality, are there? No, I know. think they just don't know what to say, do they, when they see you? Yeah, no. no, they think, they, they try and make a bit of a joke, but, you know. Yeah. Not for, you and know. you find that they talk to you like, <laughs> so you're the character, don't yeah. they? Not funny, no, that's not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they, they think they're being funny. <laughs> they think they're the first person that says it to you, don't they? Yeah, they do, yeah. All right, lad. <laughs> oh, I know, and like everybody always says, like when I put some of your clips on a Billy and sometimes they'll always say, do, do, don't leave me, yeah. do. Because he was always <laughs> saying, do, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, it's not funny, really. We've heard it that many times, though, it's not funny, though. I know. <laughs> it was at the time, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, well, we're on to the last questions now. Don't worry, guys, because I know it's been 
Oh God, it's quite well. See, it feels like we've been on for 20 minutes. It's like I'm warming up and then it's like, God. Now, I know. Yeah. My husband's just come in as well from work, so I'll have to go and see him. I was <laughs> waving his arm to say, like, come. Well, I'll be very quick then because, um, Justine, I just wanted to get this in because I know a lot of fans will actually wonder about this. We were very disappointed that you didn't actually have a proper leaving storyline. Um, yeah. Or a goodbye scene, and for somebody that had been in that, that had been an icon, had all those stories, eight years, and then to just suddenly like go without like sort of, and then like I think we were like, has she gone or is she not? And then a couple of months later, I think you'd moved. We were told you'd moved away or something. We had to draw our own conclusions, but it was weird. It's like, yeah. is Tracy coming back or not? It was. It was mad, and I, to this day, I it's still don't know. Really. And I did I did ask, and um, Mal wouldn't even meet me or talk with me, or um, oh, no. I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't even like, look, this has happened, and you've done this, and you know, it was just like mm. I was put on temporary contracts, which in hindsight I shouldn't have done. I shouldn't have agreed to do, and I should have just left. Mm. Um, but I, I was upset about leaving. I didn't want to leave. It, you know, that had been my job since I was a kid. Yeah. Um, it well, wasn't about being on the telly in front of our eyes. Yeah. It wasn't about being on the telly, that was my job, you know. Yeah. Um, and I was always professional, I always knew what I was doing, and I was never late. And I just thought it was like um it was it was bizarre. Just the fact that I would they would not give me an explanation, even though I'd asked, and it wasn't even I, I was just like shaked, I was just like pushed to one side and 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 ignored really, which I, I, I found awful at the time. Really I remember Paul Usher, Paul Usher saying, I, I, you know, do you want me to go and have a word with them and find out what's happening? I said, no. I said, I've already asked. I'm not having anyone do it on my behalf. So, yeah. um, no. So, it was... It's a great it, shame. I, I mean, it was an insult to you. An insult to yourself, obviously, because you'd built that character for eight years. And then, of course, you know, viewers are wondering where, what you know, we like to see a conclusion to a character and to just suddenly yeah. go away. Because... There was quite a few instances with that as well. Um, Anna Friel died off stage, I mean, uh, off screen. Um, her character had been in there, and then suddenly you just were told was told that she died from a heart attack. I think Anna left. So, yeah, Anna left though. I think. Oh right, okay. Well, there yeah. were other people. I know. Um, I think there was Max. I think I told you this last time. There was towards the end. There was um, all the characters. Some of the characters had left before the final episode, including uh, Jackie. Uh, Dixon and Max who were married at that time and they didn't have like a farewell scene or anything as such it's just like a couple of weeks just before it ended you heard that they'd moved away and that was it there was no sort of conclusion to that I just thought and they'd been there like 13 years and it was just seemed such a waste yeah. not that I'm putting the yeah. show that anybody's worked down but uh, you do expect if a character's been in there for a long time you expect a sort of like conclusion it's to also a way of saying this actor is available for work as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I wasn't given that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just wasn't given it. I, I, you know, I am, I'm not bitter about it. I was for a while. Um, but it really put me off, put me mm. off the industry completely. I yeah. think I did a panto wow. after that, which was like the most fabulous thing I've ever done. I had such a laugh and then I wasn't interested. Because mm. yeah. it involves a lot of traveling around and stuff as well. And you just, yeah, you know, Holly was a baby at that time. Travel either, yeah. Oh well, I don't want to put a downer on it because obviously you yeah, look you're right. obviously well remembered, and that's why we've got you on tonight, and you've got lots of happy memories to look back on. Yeah, no, yeah. I've got loads of nice memories. It just ended wrongly. Yeah, yeah, of course, but you don't let that cloud your memories, do you? No, I no, used actually. to, but I don't know. No, yeah. I don't blame you. <laughs> I don't blame her. I just felt like that as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I think it's really, really bizarre. And you've never had any sort of explanation whatsoever for that now to this day. No, there was another actress had just said in conversation to Mal, um, what, what's happening with Justine? And he says, I'm keeping her on her toes. Huh? Oh, God. <laughs> right, that's slightly oh, sounds she come bit... down and told me straight away and I was like, yeah. do you know what? Even if they offer me another couple yeah. of weeks in, I'm not, I'm not taking it, it yet. Yeah. Oh, don't blame me. Oh, no way. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about that. But like we said, there's lots of happy, mem wonderful memories to look back on. Yeah. Um, just before we depart, have you got time to, to stay for two more minutes, Justine? 
It's yeah. just for John because obviously I promise you we were supposed to do this the first time. We were supposed to do it right. last time and we still didn't get it in. So now we're going to do it. Here, right. give, uh, give your autobiography an unashamed plug. I'm just going to say it's called uh, You Never Say Goodbye and it's highly recommended. John, I'll let you tell about it. Yeah, no, it's just a letter to me dad who died when I was 16. So it's about my life uh, after he died. So it just tells him everything that I've done after. from, uh, And then it goes back into my childhood. Yes. And then, then it comes back into when I started to be an actor because I was a scaffolder for 10 years before I ever became an actor. I was like, I was like Justine in a way. I didn't, uh, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then all of a sudden someone said, you'd be good as an actor. Mm. And I just went to drama school. I thought that's what you had to do, you know, at the time. And I'm glad I did in the end because I had a good fun mm. and I met Cat. But yeah, so it's basically all about my career uh, before I was, uh, in my life before I was an actor and then my career up until 2000, the year 2000. It's, it's a very emotional read, but I've got to say, just so everybody knows as well, it's an emotional read, but there's a lot of fun. There's a lot of laughs yeah. along the way. And, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. and I'm not just saying- I've... I didn't know about that you as well, John, that I read in the book. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh yeah. There was loads of things I didn't know that you'd done, yeah. Oh no, I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, where can we get your book, John? <laughs> I, I know, of course, but go on. Okay. No, no, I've finished now. Thanks a lot. Oh, okay. Well, I was just going to say, you can order John's um, autobiography, You Never Say Goodbye, from Amazon. Is yeah. there anywhere else that you'd like me to mention? No, just get it from Amazon. That's get it from Amazon. It's easy. They've always got it in stock. And uh, one last quick question for you, John, because I know you've said this before, but this is for you. If this was, if your book was ever to be adapted into a film or a TV series, because I'd like it to be, I think it would make <laughs> a really good series. Yeah. Who would you like to play you? Me, me. Yes. I couldn't because I was uh, my son. My son, <laughs> John. Son. He's yes. a, yeah, yeah. Young yeah. yeah. Who else? He looks like me when I was his age. So, yeah, why not? There we are. Perfect. <laughs> Oh, yeah. guys, I can't believe we've been on for an hour and a half and it's felt like 20 minutes again. Yeah, no, I've got a dead leg. Oh, yeah, well, you're, yeah, I know, I'm just keeping you now. So it's just, but we've had such no. a good talk. I've really no. enjoyed it, guys. So I just want to say really appreciate it and thank you so, so much. Yeah, thank you. No, it's thank been great. you. I just want to let everybody know as well, because I, I, I think you two know him as well. Um, we've got hopefully Gabrielle Glaister and Stephen Pinder coming up um, oh, great. next yeah, next month. Um, yeah. And also George uh, Wilson. He yeah. was in Grange Hill as well. He, he's confirmed today. Uh, and also a part two, it's a similar one that I've done with you, John, a part two interview with uh, Michael Stark and Lewis Emmerich, just about uh, what they've uh, done uh, since yeah. British Brookside. Yes. So Great. it's all happening, all coming up, guys. Well, well we've done. had no blips today either, have we? So. No. Don't forget, to, you did press the record, didn't you? <laughs> I did. Well, we're on Facebook now, so I can download it afterwards. So we're all right. So honestly, I wanted to cry after that. But now we've done it, now I can laugh about that now. Good luck. Okay. Such a great chat. Yeah, brilliant. It's been oh, great talking to you. And guys, I shall keep sending you the clips. I hope I'm not annoying you when I'm sending you the clips. No, not at all. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, sometimes I'm, I'm going, where did he get that from? <laughs> <laughs> well, John, I'll just tell John quick. Stephen. Well, um, taped. Um, do you know when it was on Life? Was it called Lifetime? The channel, Living something? UK Living. Living. Yeah, Stephen recorded yeah. like loads of them, but only the ones that like the Corkills were in. So that's where you get some of them from, isn't it? Ian? Yes. Where it was it called? Yeah. Lifetime. What's yeah. It called? Lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. It was there. when it was repeated in the early nineties. The early oh. episodes. So we kept them and he converted them to the the PC. Oh recently oh, so he's been able to access them well justine let's, hope, <laughs> justine let's hope that you can rebuild that collection with new copies now because you can do yeah. it in hd now when it gets repeated channel four if you're watching yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's about time they did i mean we're not like i said we're not calling for the series to come back just to repeat i don't think there's any harm in it yeah it'd be a great idea to repeat it <laughs> yes and obviously especially for you two so yeah i shall keep on the guys Write me yeah. a check when uh, it gets done. Yeah. We'll take <laughs> you for the time. Even if we get 50% of what we got in the first place, but I don't mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Well, that's it. And it'll be nice for us fans, of course, to watch it. So, but anyway, yeah. I won't keep you any longer. So it's been a yeah. great Hi, pleasure, Jenny. guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again very you soon. Go. And good night to all. And thank you very, yeah. very much for doing this. Okay. Okay. No problem. My pleasure. You have a lovely bye, weekend, bye. guys. And you. Bye. Yeah. See you Don't soon. Let, bye bye. Don't let, Don't bye. Let bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get off now. Ending. Oh,